AAP-01. You've probably seen somebody running it at your local airsoft field or amidst an internet shopping catalog. But is this $100 plastic pipe of an airsoft pistol your next purchase? And what goodies does it pack inside? Well, let's get into it. So let's start off at where every airsoft gun starts off, and I'm not talking about sweatshops. I'm talking about the box. Now usually you just add one like this to your collection because it's a cool looking box. But I took something of note with its packaging that I felt was different to other boxes in my closet collection. This box is seemingly 100% recyclable with a 100% construction of cardboard. No foam like the kind in my ENL and SEMA AK boxes. No thick paint like on my old HK VFC and ENL box. Maybe a few plastic bags, but aside from that, it's a pretty eco-friendly piece of packaging. Rather than foam, it uses an eggshell crate to cradle your pistol in and out of shipping. It's a good thing it's recyclable too, because that's where it's going. The recycling. This box isn't nearly as alluring as every other airsoft box I have, and I've got too many. So let's move away from it. Here she is, Action Army's AAP-01. All polymer construction, only interrupted by metal for essential parts so that the gun doesn't blow up in your face like a Samsung. This is a gun I'd call a competitive pistol. Even without upgrades, it's extremely snappy due to its very lightweight reciprocating action. Snappiness is kind of the root of most builds for competitive shooters, so keeping in line with stereotyping, it's an objectively competitive pistol. The TM High Kappa could be a comparable product as it's really the only pistol you'd find in a competitive airsoft scene right now. If you were to compare these two pistols though, one thing becomes apparent. You buy the High Kappa for a blend of good form and function. And you buy the AAP-01 for the same reason I did, function over form. Despite the extremely good stock performance at $100, the myriad of cheap and super effective upgrades and its compatibility with established aftermarket parts and Glock mags, this gun is uber ugly. Sure, I'm starting off negative, but bad news sells just like GMR mini maps. Why is it always out of stock? <laughs> the external design philosophy is... strange. Like you're looking at a sheet of geometry homework etched into a pistol. Most striking is the weird window of texture on the grip, split into a flat stippled dish and an elevated hexagonal texture. Then there's this strange splash of skeletonizing at the magwell. Functionally, it's a loaded mag indicator as if the huge slide release window didn't cut it. That's really where my gripes end with the low risk design, however. These just stick out like a sore thumb to me. The metal body pins add a nice gleam to the homogenous polymer pistol. And my favorite little details are the red band on the safety, the easy to toggle and wavy mag release, and the metal disassembly button that both matches the bolt in profile and material. I like it because it takes up what would otherwise be dead space on the pistol if they went for a more Glock style lower. Speaking of the disassembly button, let's talk about the upper. Now look at it, it's a nice upper, but its molding leaves the mold lines to stick out with a mountainous profile. The pistol comes with two places for mounting rails, but in my opinion this completely kills the look for the pistol. I opted for a smaller rail mount for the optics I plan to mount on this pistol, but I had to compromise with the lower rail for my flashlights because I, I didn't really have any other options. Note that the frame here is a little chunky, which makes the press switch style pistol lights sit too far from comfort. This is so lame. However, and this is off of presumption, the paddle style lights should enable the lights to hug up right where your pistol light switches should be. The manual that comes with this gun even recommends the style of flashlight as an accessory, which is really the only noteworthy thing of this manual. If you're looking for a light that complements the look of the barrel, I'd say get this one from Spec Precision. More on that brand in another video though. Then there's the orange tip and wow, it's ugly. Thankfully, it's easy to roll off, and the threads are orange too, and RA Tech sells a black one for $4. You may have noticed there's a noticeable divide in plastic texture, or even material present, between the upper and lower. Although a seemingly strange choice, I think the intentions behind the design choice were good on Action Army's part. The divide in materials gives the pistol a pre-upgraded appearance out of the box, and here's how. KWA does this a lot better with their QRF series, which I'm going to use as an example. Here, the upper and lower have the same finish, but the rail and controls have a shiny, anodized finish. This not only being a great design choice on Sappho's part, but also akin to popular CNC to ornaments and aftermarket rails that the community of AR-style replica owners can find on their once-stock rifles. 
In a vague sense, the mixture of different finishes looks like different manufacturers made different aftermarket parts for a specific model that were then attached to said model, appearing like the gun was pre-upgraded, each part made by a different manufacturer without a cohesive finish in mind. Anyways, I mentioned the QRF just because it's way more recognizable with metal than it is with cast plastic. The intention was good, but it falls flat for the most part just by material. <clears throat> Probably not intentional because it was fixed on the AAP-01C. Off of form though, now on to function. The pistol features a trigger and mag release in all the right places that a modern pistol would have them. The only outliers being the emergency safety and disassembly button. The safety is a simple, effective, and unique control to interact with. It's a cross-block style safety where red indicates fire and black means even more safe with the passive trigger safety. Being conveniently placed above the trigger, the safety for right-handed shooters is easy to disengage with your right-hand trigger finger and encourages a thought process behind engaging it as you have to use your offhand to do so. The recessed ramp that meets the safety guides your finger into properly meeting it, making the manipulation of this gun easier when your eyes are focused on something else. It's like this with nearly every control. The mag release, slide release, and bolt, resulting in a comfortable, ergonomic pistol to use all day. Similarly easy to toggle is the aforementioned mag release. Large, textured, and with a firm spring, it's a satisfying button to press, even with the most extreme of tunnel vision inducing goggle fog. Although the bolt release button may look difficult to interact with due to how low profile it is, the curvature of the upper guides your fingers onto the horizontal face of its release, with the molded trough of the lower ensuring your thumb stops right where it needs to. It's a good bolt release, easy enough to index for the more tactical reload-minded people, and low profile enough to not get in the way of those with tap mag adapters and thick short stroke kits that completely negate the bolt hold open feature. Could this be intentional? Another budget cut? I don't know, and I know you probably don't care. We do not the one gripe I have about this pistol ergonomically is accessing the bolt loaded battery. You can't just grip the top or front like a gun with a slide, but rather you have to squeeze the sides hoping your fingers or gloves have caught the little wings that protrude from the bolt. It's made easier with aftermarket charging handles, but that's extra weight on your bolt that could slow the cycling down if you don't have a strong enough recoil spring to boot. So shooting the gun stock is fun. Similar to the GHK G5, the all polymer body paired with the metal bolt adds a nice little kick to each shot, although short lived due to the speed of the gun's reciprocation. It just makes you want to keep shooting, chasing that satisfying little punch with each shot. The gun's full auto feature completely erases that grade for recoil. With a flip, pull, and- FUCK! I JUST bent MY FUCKING FINGERNAIL! GOD! You get a nice full auto feature for all your backyard clinking and, well, having fun with friends? I didn't feel like going over this in the controls because it's not really something I think you'll find yourself manipulating enough to really care about. Anyways, you get about FPS in the low 300 range and a dual output below one. Pretty much CQB legal. A noticeable quirk of the gun is how cold it gets. The bolt and the mag that comes with the gun stock gets pretty cold after a good old semi-auto dump, even in Georgia heat. This is to me just strange. I don't particularly understand how a bolt so small and light gets so cold, but this is why upgrades exist. It may be a product of the stock action army mag, as it seems to just run out of gas after spitting its 22 rounds. Funny enough, the WE mags that I run alongside the mag that came with the pistol do better at holding gas and keeping the pistol above freezing, so it may just be a mag issue. The mags aren't anything notable, just a clone of the TM but with way cheaper, chippier paint. I'd really just recommend the WE mags for this pistol. The springs are strong, they hold gas a lot better, and the only downside is that they get pretty heavy in bulk. But WE makes a polymer option. How good these are, I'm not sure, but if they're anything like these, then they're perfect with the added benefit of a lightweight polymer construction. No $60 garter kit necessary. Also, here's a tip for people who are trying to swap out their base plates or that green gas can nozzle is just not fitting into your valve correctly. If you lift up like that on this little piece right here, it comes right off. You don't have to find a little tool to push this in and then slide it off. Just push it down. New base plate on like that, and yeah. The lack of a reciprocating action leaves the barrel fixed and unwobbly, and while ironically not the most accurate thing, it'll do well enough in CQB. The hop-up can easily be adjusted through the ejection port with your fingers, or just by splitting the pistol and scrolling the adjustment gear beneath to avoid another Ow, I bent my fucking fingernail! Turn the dial towards the barrel for less hop, and vice versa for more. The trigger is, well, there's a reason there are so many aftermarket triggers for these things. If the safety reminded you of a Steyr AUG, the stock trigger will make you feel like you're shooting one. 
There's a lot of take up and then a stiff little wall. A little more pressure and there's the click you're looking for, followed by a near immediate reset. Gotcha. So why competition ready at under $130? Well, the gun is just a hundred bucks, and with all the things it packs out of the factory, it's a complete steal. The extra 30 on top of that hundred dollar payment comes into play with just buying a trigger, as the stock trigger's take-up is the biggest flaw of this pistol. But once an adjustable is thrown in, it rivals and even beats the trigger pulls of some of the decked-out high kappas that are nearly ten times the cost of the stock AAP01. And that's just by throwing a thirty dollar upgrade that's made easier by the plethora of tutorials on YouTube. I recommend this one. The cycle speed is already great, it runs on HPA and the stock mag is easily attached to adapters, there's no need for a fixed barrel upgrade or an aluminum red dot cage around the gun. Everything you need or want is possible and included with that $100 purchase, which mind you is $100 less than a pistol with basically the same build quality. Am I saying it's better than a high kappa? Well, you definitely get better performance and practical customizability at a way cheaper price. And the high kappa markup doesn't apply to it. You don't have to spend $70 for a hammer set or upgraded internals. It's one of the cheapest, effective, and reliable guns to have by your side throughout your airsoft journey. The most commonly complained about key failure point with these is the pot metal hammer group, which is cheaply replaceable for quality stainless steel and, on the more expensive side, steel internals. If you have any issues, the AAP01 owner's subreddit has a video of nearly every issue the gun may have with its solution in the comments section by an easy keyword search of problem, so you won't be in the dark. The AAP01 is now starting to reach a point where it's nearly as cosmetically customizable as the high kappa, with grips, bolts, colored nozzles, colored internals, mag releases, etc. All that's to say, if you're on the fence for one of these, do it. If you're a speed softer, you have the pretty and flamboyant CNC cosmetic upgrades and high speed upgrades at your disposal at an honest price. If you're the more milsim oriented player, I mean it can take red dots, and it takes Glock mags, so it's technically a 9mm. And if you're a casual weekend warrior, I mean this shit is just fun and cheap, so what's better than that? All in all, the AAP-01 is one of the best pistols on the market by form, function, performance, upgradability, and most importantly, price. So get yours now! Ah! If you want to see how I build my AAP-01, the video is on the way. Soon. I promise. You won't have to start a new family. So what do you think? Is this your next pistol? If you have one, what are your favorite features of the AAP-01? I've been running with scissors, and thank you for watching.